Now today we are going to solve a question on mixed topics that is area under the curve and differential equation. Now the question is find out the area bounded by the two curves. The first curve is given f of x in the form of integration and for this curve it is given x belongs to 0 to pi by 2 close. And the second curve is given in form of differential equation and the curve is passing through 4 comma minus 2. So let's start with the first curve. Now in order to calculate f of x, I think the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to integrate both of them individually. For that, I think you're going to use by parts or you're going to take this individual function as theta and you're going to proceed. But I think that will be very lengthy here. Instead of that, I think we can do something else. That is, we're going to differentiate the function with respect to x. Now why I'm differentiating on both sides, you'll get to know immediately. So differentiating with respect to x and I'm going to use Leibniz here because upper limits are variable here. So applying Leibniz theorem, so differentiation of this will be put the upper limit in the function, we'll get this as sine inverse of root over sine square x will be mod sine of x since x is from 0 to pi by 2, it will be sine of x. In first quadrant, sine is positive. Now differentiation of sine square of x will be 2 sine of x cos of x. Now if you differentiate the lower limit, it will be 0. So immediately it will be 0, I'm not writing here. Now let's differentiate the second integral. So put the upper limit in the function, we'll get this as cos inverse of cos of x. And again, I'm not going to write the mod. And now differentiation of upper limit, that is minus two times of sine of x into cos of x. Now here we'll get this as f dash of x will be equal to sine inverse of sine of x in the first quadrant when x is from zero to pi by two for that branch will be x only. And this will be two sine of x into cos of x. And next will be again cos inverse of cos of x will be x only. And then this will be minus 2 sine of x into cos of x. Now if you check one thing here, that is both of them will cancel out as it is. So from here, I got f of x as equal to 0. This implies if f dash of x is equal to 0, this implies f of x is a constant function. If f of x is a constant function, that means we can simplify the function very quickly here. Now, I think there's no need to integrate this. Okay, we can think of a one value as a note you can write here. Think of one value where sine square is equal to cos square or sine of x is equal to cos of x. So I think I know where sine of x and cos of x are equal in first quadrant. So I think they are equal at 45 degree and it will be equal to one by root two. So I'm going to substitute because if you substitute any value, Function will be same, right? f of x is a constant function, function will be same. So I'm substituting this. And there is a reason I'm substituting sine of x and cos of x is one by root two. Because the moment I substitute, I'll get f of x is equal to integration from one by eight to one by two. And both upper limits and lower limits are same. So that means I can add both integrations. We'll here we'll get this as sine inverse of root over t plus cos inverse of root over t dt. So that's why that's the reason I've add I've taken sine of x and cos of x as one by root two because I can add these two integrals. The moment I add this sine inverse of theta plus cos inverse of theta will be pi by two, and I can write f of x as integration one by eight. One second, integration one by eight to one by two. This is pi by two, and dt here. So this will be pi by two multiplied by difference of limit is one by two minus one by eight. So I think we'll get this as 3 pi by 16 here. So from here, we got f of x as 3 pi by 16, a constant function. Now let's solve the second function. Now for the second curve, we have to solve the differential equation and the curve is passing through 4 comma minus 2. Now there are many methods to solve a particular differential equation, but the best one, which I like is, I tried to form exact differential whenever I can. So here only we will try to make a differential equation if possible. So let's open this. We'll get this as x y into d of x plus y raised to power four into d of x is equal to. We'll get this as x y cube dy minus x square dy. So from the first term and the last term, I think if I take this on the other side, and if I take x common here, so I can see here we'll get this as y d of x plus x dy and now this is the exact differential this is a product rule is written right so this is the exact differential of x y is written now let's take this term on the other side so we'll get this as this term on the other side and we'll get this as x y cube dy minus y raised to power 4 d of x here so this is nothing but x into exact differential of x y 
now we are here we have to form exact differential if if it is possible here so from here from these two i think if i take x square into y cube if i take common the remaining will be here remaining is y by x dy here and here remaining will be y by x square i think and here there's no y sorry so 1 by x dy minus y by x square here d of x now this is x times of d of x y and it is equal to x square y cube and here if you take the lcm here we'll get x square here and here we'll get this as x dy minus y dx here now i think it's a quotient rule is written here and it's clearly visible here now i'm going to write this as d of x y now i need the term x y in order to integrate this so i'm going to write this as x y whole square here and that x y whole square i've taken from this term and here remaining is y and remaining is x on the left hand side so i'm going to write this as y by x and this is exact differential of y by x you can see here now i'm going to integrate on both sides so integrating on both sides will get constant of integration also so let's integrate on both sides so if you integrate you will get this as minus 1 upon xy here and on the right hand side you will get this as y square by 2x square and then plus c constant of integration now this curve is passing through 4 comma minus 2 so let's substitute let's plug the point here in order to calculate the constant of integration so we'll get this as plus 1 by 8 is equal to if you put y square so that will be 4 here and then 16 into 2 is 32 here and plus c here so if you notice one thing 4 by 32 is 1 by 8 only 1 by 8 will cancel out this implies here c is equal to 0 here now our curve is if c is equal to 0 our curve will be uh, as you can see here y cube will be equal to uh, xx will cancel out you will get this as minus 2x here so our function is g of x i can say because already f of x i have taken so i am taking this as g of x you can say cube root of minus 2x so this is our function now after finding first two functions i'm going to calculate the area here now i'm going to calculate the area between f of x and g of x so first we're going to draw f of x and g of x because we'll get more clarity here so let's say my x and y axis and g of x is very easy to draw because it's cube root of x and with a negative sign so it will be like this passing through origin as you can see it's passing through origin and f of x is very much easy to draw because it's a constant function so let's say this is my f of x and this is my g of x here now area bounded by these two function is this much area right and i'm going to take here vertical strips only because it will be very easy to calculate let's say that one of the point of intersection here is uh, lambda comma zero we'll calculate later on because we need this point if i'm taking vertical strip i have to integrate from this here lambda to zero as you can see here origin now area will be given by i think area will be integration from lambda to 0, I am taking vertical strip. That means I have to take y2 minus y1. So above function is f of x and lower function is g of x here and d of x. So this will be the area. So area will be equal to integration from lambda to 0. Let's put f of x here. That is 3 pi by 16 here. Plus you will get this as uh, you can say 2 raised to power 1 by 3 and x here x is to power 1 by 3 here and d of x. Now, uh, let's find out lambda here because we'll be needing in the end lambda here. So, in order to calculate the value of x where both intersects, I'm going to equate the curve. So, if I equate, we'll get this as minus 2x raised to power 1 by 3 is equal to 3 pi by 16. So, from here, x will be or you can say lambda will be equal to or x will be equal to minus 1 by 2. You can say here 3 pi by 16 whole cube. So, this will be the value of lambda. Now let's proceed with the area. So area will be, I think I can write this as 3 pi by 16 to x. And then here you'll get this as 2 raised to power 1 by 3 as it is. Integration of this is x is to power 4 by 3. And then 3 by 4 will come here. Now the lower limit is 0. So lower limit is lambda. Here upper limit is 0. Now here a will be equal to when you put the upper limit it will be zero because both will contain x and when you put the lower limit lambda here it will be negative times of this so i'm taking one negative from my side because upper limit minus lower limit now when you put lambda here you will get this as 3 pi by 16 whole raised to power 4 and then 1 by 2 here 
and minus times you'll get this as 2 raised to power 1 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 4 here and then when you put here you'll get this as 2 1 upon 2 raised to power uh, you'll get this as 4 by 3 here and then you'll get this as 3 pi by 16 here we have to take fourth power and then we have to take cube root so the moment you take the cube root this will cancel out and then the fourth power here as it is now this will be equal to i think 2 raised to power 1 by 3 and 2 raised to power 1 by 3 will cancel out here and i can throughout i can see 3 pi by 16 raised to power 4 i can take common remaining is 1 by 2 minus remaining is 3 by 3 by 4 is remaining here and I have cancelled 2 raised to power 1 by 3 with 2 raised to power 4 by 3 remaining is 2. So I think we will get 3 by 8 here. The final answer will be 3, uh, you can say 1 by 2 minus 3 by 8 is, I think it will be equal to 1 by 8 times 3 pi by 16 is whole raised to power 4. So finally area will be what 1 by 8 times of 3 pi by 16 and whole raised to power 4 here. So this will be our final answer. And that will be all.